Hooray, my favorite time of Mobile World Conference. I'm at Ericsson and Jonas, the booth manager of Ericsson, who's been here forever. There's one thing stable in the world and that's Jonas. He's going to give me the tour. What's the focus of Ericsson at the moment and what's real because that's what they're really good at. Okay, Ericsson always takes over hole number two. They have hundreds and hundreds of applications and they're very much focused on operators nowadays. It's not for consumers anymore. KPN scored big time because they were upgrading their 2G network and it immediately was ready for 4G. It was software upgradable even before the frequencies were shipped and they used Ericsson equipment and they were six weeks after the frequency sale, sale they were ready. How is that now if you have 4G networks? Do you have to start all over again? So Jan Derksen, you're from uh, Ericsson Netherlands. Yes. That sharing of spectrum between 4 and 5G and software upgradable, uh, upgradability, how is yes. that working? Well, we have here our radios in our basements that we already have been delivering since 2015. And by software installing 5G capability on it, we will have the possibility for our operators to also activate 5G in their existing frequency. Base. And you have the same equipment. What equipment uh, is... Uh, I mean, the base stations can be completely, are so, are completely compatible or... Is it the antennas which have to be changed? What part has to be changed? Basically, if for this solution, you don't have to change anything. You install the software, you have, of course, phones that then support 5G as well. Yeah. And then the end users can run 5G and 4G at the same time in the same frequency carrier. Okay, so KPN has 4G equipment of uh, Ericsson that they can immediately, without investment, switch from dynamically from 4 to 5G and they use the same uh, the same uh, spectrum and they can go back and forth between 4G and 5G over the same equipment and it's from 2015 on already working. So important with 5G is MIMO, massive input, massive output and um, that means that there's a lot of antennas which are beaming towards you and that's a lot more efficient. Let's take a look. Okay, Asif Ali, how many uh, antennas are in this box over there? So this one is a low-band product, which yep. has 32 antennas. So 32 okay, and up there? Yeah. So that is a high band up to 28 gigahertz, and it has, it has 512 antennas. Okay, can you show me how these beams uh, look? Uh, because I, I'm really curious, because that's supposed to look at... Uh, yep, take Definitely. a look. Definitely. We like to show the beams. So now we have uh, augmented reality and we see the beams coming out. So this is a multi-user solution. You see different beams and this is the general, uh, the general solution, right? This is going to everywhere. So and you see that all these antennas are pointed to, to individual, uh, individual players. Definitely. And you can track different users with this. Yeah. So, okay. hey Gustavo, does this now help that 5G will not only deliver more uh, bandwidth but also my phone will last a full day? Absolutely, because one of the pillars of 5G development is uh, uh, ultra lean design. What does it mean? It, in one of, one of the things it means, it means uh, leaving signaling on the air only when it's needed. So energy efficiency is one of the main goals with 5G as well. So what's the influence of latency on gamers? And the interesting thing, they have a good demo here. They have a VR, uh, you put a VR glasses on and here is an ECG, so it basically it's measured your brain activity and that is measured in the software and then they put in people the gamers they put the gamers onto an uh, shoot them up game and when they look at at what latency are they going to mess up so Thais is from uh, neurons they do the research okay you introduce a certain amount of uh, package loss and uh, an amount of delay at what moment do they start to mess up the gamers uh, well, they start messing up to various degrees depending on the actual latency. But in this case here, we are inducing a 20% packet loss and 200 millisecond latency just to. And then show everything reasons. messes up. It does. It really does. Yeah. Nagar, you're the uh, latency um, um, expert. If you optimize a 4G network, what what other possibilities to go? I mean, if we normally have 100 milliseconds, what can you where, where can you get with 4G? Well, with the 4G, depending on the problem that we detect, we've managed to reduce the latency of uh, 10 milliseconds in some cases, up to 100 milliseconds in the other cases. So depending okay. on the problem. And in 5G, what can, you do, what can you accomplish there? Well, with the 5G, just enabling the 5G features, we are reducing, uh, let's say, 50%. Yeah, and then and you can go from 10 milliseconds all down the way to down to? 2 milliseconds. Cool. Launch, when was the standard agree upon? Oh, the standards were set and agreed upon in December. Uh, three months ago? Yeah, three months ago. Okay. And, and your hardware, when was it ready? I was ready since 2015, 2015. Uh, it just okay. needs a and now, 
Okay, now we see it in action. We have one gigabit here on an 100 megahertz, 100 megahertz spectrum. And you see here the live uh, stream on a phone. And we have a latency here of five milliseconds. And the uplink is 129 and the download is 1.1 gigabit. But Ericsson can do better. They've made a test together with Qualcomm and a whole bunch of other operators and they are getting a faster. Okay, and then let's get a little bit more spectrum. Eight times uh, 100 and then you can get four gigahertz. You can see it here on this uh, demonstration, the phone. And then the latency goes down to about three or two. But in dense areas, you can get a lot more traffic, of course, uh, to lots of users. So here, Ericsson is talking about the core. And the core is not very sexy, but it is important. Why is that? It's really important, not only for 5G, but also for 4G and fixed line and all of that. It and what is the big change? The big change is that you horizontalize and virtualize. Yes drives efficiency, agility, but also the possibilities for innovation. Uh -huh. Now you can deploy a massive number of services that are virtualized with the virtualized um, functions and all of that. Yeah, so we you saw that deploy. two years ago. Yeah, yeah. And now uh, it's SK, SK Telecom and uh, Entity Docomo have done that now yeah. and they're now going ahead? Yeah, they are in the midst of all of this and they are very, very aggressive on this side because it's really needed. Yeah, so 2020 for Entity Docomo won't be a problem? No. <laughs> so for now, this was the tour of the Ericsson booth. They've done a good job in being software upgradable from 4G to 5G, and they say that's what's unique about Ericsson. They, uh, Nokia doesn't have that, and uh, Huawei doesn't have that. So if this is true, they're building a lot of new networks now, and they have a very good reputation. And that means that um, the price of Ericsson, because they're shipping now, this year, should be coming up quite a bit.